feel helpless. Last Sunday, they, they put my mother-in-law in the hospital and things went from bad to worse. My son wakes up every night having coughing fits, choking, can't breathe, he's not sleeping well. My youngest son. Then, I get a phone call and my oldest son tells me that the same heart disease that I have, I've passed off to him. And I begin to think, I said, God, I can preach to hundreds of people, lay hands on the sick and they recover. Why can't I do it to my own family? The Lord answered me and he says, first of all, I'm close to those with a broken heart. Hallelujah. John, you don't understand the plans that I have for you, let alone the plans that I have for your children, let alone the plans I have for your mother-in-law, let alone the plans that I have for your wife. But trust me, have faith and know that I am God. I say all that today to say this is because there may be a situation that you're in. Just as a husband, I, I, I want to console my wife because her mom is sick and we don't know what's going to happen. And she's going through all these emotions and me as a husband and I love her, I want to be able to say the right thing yes. to make her feel better. Yeah. My son, my baby, still my baby, son. You're still my baby. My oldest boy, big as he is. Uh, he, he's on the phone and he's telling me about the disease that the doctor says he has that I have in my heart and that the devil is robbing him of his joy and as a dad I want to reach out and hold my son and tell him it's going to be okay yes. yeah. but it just seems like the words that I have won't console neither one of them So I did what I know to do, and that's just pray. Amen. That's right. yes. And have to understand and know that one thing, if I'm going to be in this business of, of preaching the gospel, I need to believe what I'm preaching. Amen. Come on, somebody. I, I, I'm saying this because just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean that I'm exempt from all the afflictions and suffering of all the saints. Amen. That's right. But I do know one thing. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against you, God, will prosper. No weapon formed against my mother-in-law shall prosper. And you ain't gonna know that until you experience the weapon. Amen. How am I gonna know if my car does 120 unless I take it to 120? The speedometer says 120, but it doesn't mean it goes there. Yes, right. We have to experience it to believe it. And it builds our faith in God. Yes. Yes. Praise God. I, I just wanted to thank all the saints. And I'm not even, I wasn't even, I'm not even preaching that area today. Praise God. I just, I just wanted to get that off my chest and, and just hope that I can encourage you that I'm going through stuff just like I know you're going through stuff. But to hang on in it. Yes. Trust in the word of the Lord. Amen. There's going to come a time. Yeah, you can praise him, sister. You can praise him. Because you know what? There's going to come a time that everything you learn is going to be put to the test. Yes. Right. 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 It rains on the just as well as the unjust. God told us that. Doesn't make us exempt. We can be as good as we want to be, but I believe the Bible says there is none good. No, not one. But the difference is we have the great hope. We have the Prince of Peace. We have the King of Kings. So we don't complain and suffer like those that have no hope. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'm going to get out there. I'm going to get out there.
Somebody give God praise. Let me give God praise. Let me give God praise. Praise God. Praise God. I love the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for drawing me closer to you. And that is a blessing because my desire is to be closer to God. And I know it's yours too. That's why you come to church. Praise God. So um, I want to talk about what went on yesterday at the community love event. Come on down. So those of you who weren't able to be here or experiences, it was a phenomenal event. Amen. And, and uh, as a pastor, uh, and my pastor, as a pastor, my task is to encourage every baptized believer to release their gift that's inside them. And yesterday, I was truly blessed to see some of you guys in action. You guys don't understand because, see, a lot of people, when you go to work, what's your reward for work? Big old paycheck, right? You guys go, matter of fact, you ain't even started work yet. You can't wait till the next payday. Well, my paycheck as a pastor is to see people's gifts being brought out of them and used to the glory of God. Because now I can sit back and go, God, thank you. I, I, I know that my labor of love is not in vain. I, I see people working and operating in their gifts. Now, 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 what I experienced yesterday was, was basically this. And it says it in the Bible in Ephesians chapter 4 and 16. It says, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by which every joint supplied according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, for those of you that don't know, this, this event was a dream. It was a vision of Mama Betty who right now is laying in the hospital. A week before the, a week before the event ends up in the hospital. Yeah. Now as a pastor, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, we're gonna have to cancel the event because she's the one that's taking care of everything, right? But do you know what happened? This scripture just happened. What I'm seeing in the body right here at the building in this, this fellowship of believers is that they don't allow the ball to drop. You got to give yourself a hand because this is what happened. When one went down, somebody else stood up and said, I don't worry about it. The work of the Lord must go on. Praise God. And, 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 and I just want to give a big shout out to Sister Johanna. God bless you. Now listen, I want to tell you saints, and, and the Bible tells me to give honor where honor is due, and that's what I'm doing. She, she, she's going through a lot of pain physically, but yet she stepped up. She reached out. She made phone calls. She made things ha happen like I've never seen it before. I, I mean, this body of believers is only a little bit over three years old, and you know what? It is a great feeling to know that no matter who's gone, the church is going to keep going. And Johanna said, listen, I'll do it. I got it. You tell Mama Betty not to worry. We gonna make this thing happen. And it happened. I'm telling you, God knows how to do things through the saints because we were worried about we were gonna have enough stuff. But how many people know how God does things? Exceeding abundantly. Above all you can ask or think. My cup runneth over. Hallelujah. We got all kinds of stuff sitting back there ready for the next event. Praise God. The saints of God came together and made it happen. Because, you know, listen, just because your foot hurts, does that mean you stop walking? Somebody goes out and gets a cane or, or they just limp a little bit to make sure we get where we're going. And praise God, that's what happened. The body of Christ work together and I just want to say thank you for blessing me because yesterday it was phenomenal to sit back and and, and I preach family first and my, my son my middle son had a football game yesterday and me being the pastor I got to be here at an event and I'm always thinking look I need to be here because if things don't work uh, I got to be here to make sure they have to happen but then at the same time I preach family first so how am I going to preach about family and not take care of my family so I just made sure things were going. I got up and I left and went to my son's game. So while I'm at my son's game, I'm sitting there thinking, man, I hope everything is going okay. 
So I came back, it wasn't, it wasn't over yet. I come back and the saints of God were just out there moving, witnessing the people, loving on everybody that came by. We met all kinds of people. We served, uh, God bless Tony Barajas, because he yeah. cooked over 200, like 200 hot dogs. That's a whole lot of hot dogs, right? I mean, and, and, and listen, the hot dogs we had, for those of you that, that, that weren't here, weren't the little skinny hot dogs the size of my pinky? No, no, yeah, they was huge. They was like, yeah, like hot like big. They was huge. And, and the people that came were blessed. And listen, we ministered to the homeless. We ministered to drug addicts. We ministered to whoever would come by and receive from God. It was just a huge blessing. Amen. And I want to thank everybody for that. Praise God. Praise God. So what I'm going to do is just pat you guys on the back a little bit today, if that's okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. And it reads this, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the, excell the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Now listen, I want you to understand something that when we did yesterday wasn't to glorify the church, wasn't to glorify the body of Christ, but it was to show people Jesus. So that when people see us, they see Christ and not us. You know that's important, right? Because if we're doing it just for us, we might as well just be handing out stuff under a different name. Because there's many people that feed homeless that don't have nothing to do with Christ. We want people to see the power of God in us, and that's why we do it. This treasure that God has deposited in us needs to be brought forth. Now, I, 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 I am truly, truly amazed that God will put inside of us a treasure when we're so flawed. Would any of you put something that's very valuable to you in some place that's all wrecked? Would you put it in a broken safe? But God saw fit to use us when we're all messed up. Come on, somebody. We're full of flaws and imperfections. We got issues that need tissues. Come on, somebody. I need some honest people in here that know that they're messed up. I need somebody to say, amen, I know I'm messed up. As messed up as I am as a pastor, God still condescends to use me. <laughs> oh, see, you guys don't even realize I'm so messed up, but God says, I see you not for what you are now, but I see you as what you're going to become. And I'm going to place in you this treasure. Oh, yeah, he, he didn't just do it to the pastor. See, the pastor doesn't have this extra special treasure to stand up here because the same gift that he's deposited in me, he's deposited in each and every one of you baptized believers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I need somebody in here just to know one thing. You guys got to know this one thing. You got to sit down sometime and say, listen, listen, I may not be where I should be, but I'm not where uh, I used to be. And I thank God right now. I thank the Lord Jesus Christ that he's still working on me. And don't get mad because God's working on me because I ain't got to be a prophet to understand this one thing. I know he's still working on you too. Praise God, praise God. Look at your name and say, I'm a work in progress. Look at your other name and say, I'm a work in progress. See, God wants to use you right where you're at. You see, yesterday, God didn't wait for people to, to turn around and, and, and get themselves together before he used them because you have to understand God will use you. He can't wait till you get yourself together because if he has to wait till you get yourself together, guess what? He'll never get to use you. Praise God, I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> See, we have to understand that God will use you when you're messed up. Yes. He will use you when you're confused. He will empower you in your struggles to get where God wants you to be. Yes. Oh, okay, maybe y'all didn't hear that. He was like, okay. <laughs> See, while we're, we're trying to get where God wants us, He still uses us. Yes. He empowers us with the gift that He's placed in us. Praise God. So many of us are sitting in here with all this treasure inside us and don't realize how to get it out of us. If I told you there was a treasure 
10 feet in the ground, what would you do? I said, listen, all you gotta do is get it, it's yours. <laughs> What'd you start doing? Start digging. What if I looked at you and said, you don't have a shovel? Y'all get on hands and knees and start working. <laughs> That's how you get the treasure out of you. You got to start working. Amen. You got to start serving. Amen. Praise God. I watched people yesterday, I watched people yesterday that were flowing. And I bet you they didn't even realize they were like, man. Because they started serving all of a sudden because they were being obedient to God because they were flowing in the anointing. Listen, you can't be uh, anointed and not flow in obedience with God. Anointing doesn't come on disobedience. But when we begin to serve as God commands us, the anointing comes upon us. And when the anointing comes upon us, the yokes are destroyed. People are set free, not just blessed. I'm preaching to somebody in here. Somebody slap your neighbor right now, high five, and say, God is using me to do great things. You better say it like you believe it. <laughs> yes. Praise God. I, I, I was watching, I was watching people move, and I could tell that they could think this like, man, how, how do I have the stamina for this? I, I usually can't stand this long, or, or I usually can't walk around this long, but for some reason I got this power to be able to get the job done today. I, I was watching Brother Eric. We've been talking for a long time, but I watched him in action yesterday, minister the gospel. He was he was acting, he was just like looking for people to be saved. Just tell Jesus that I have to tell somebody about Jesus. And, and the Bible tells you to always be prepared to give an answer for which the hope that you believe in. He was so prepared that there were people coming at him left and right with excuses, and he shot them all down. Now I'm telling you, I've never seen so many witness like this. He left one guy, it was funny, he left one guy and just walked away from after he done the dude was sitting there like, I need Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. Now, but, but listen, listen, I, and I, I, I could be wrong with this. Just since yesterday, some of you guys were in here flowing in, in, in the anointing of God and reaching out and touching people, changing people's lives and, and moving and operating in the, in the things of God. I bet you probably went home and all hell and high water probably just broke out in your life. <laughs> so you got to understand, when, when you start moving and flowing in the anointing, when you become anointed, guess what? You become on the hit list of hell itself. You got to understand that the devil doesn't want you flowing in the anointing. He just wants you to be blessed. Oh yeah, did I get spiritual for you? Because I know some people that ain't saved that are blessed. But there ain't people that are, aren't saved and anointed. See, anybody can get blessed. We can go out and bless anybody that don't know God. But it takes obedience to flow in the anointing. And when you flow in the anointing, you get highlighted in heaven, and you're highlighted in hell. That's right. And at that point, all hell is going to break loose in your life. Yes, but I'm here to encourage you because obviously you're doing something right. Yes. Because if you live a life that ain't nothing happening with you and everything's good, guess what? You ain't doing nothing. Yes. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Yep. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I just wrote something here. Just, so don't think because you're anointed that you won't have any trouble. Huh? People look at you searching for the anointing. So I, I had to sit down and even think. You know why this is happening to you? Because God wants to get closer to you. You sit down and say, God, I want to be, you know, your prayers and everything, the things that you say to God when nobody else is around. God takes suffering and brings us closer to him. When we begin to flow in the things of God, you don't think that something bad ain't going to happen. Yes, yeah. God says, okay, great. Now that I got you moving, let me bring you a little bit closer. It's when you're broken, you get closer to God. Yes. When everything's going good, we tend to forget. Yes. Look at the children of Israel. God delivered them out of bondage, slavery. He didn't just deliver them. He did all kinds of miracles. Yes, I mean, I, let's just forget all the plagues. Let's just talk about how he parted the Red Sea. I mean, that would make anybody a believer. I mean, you, you watch an ocean open up, and then you, you walk across on dry land. Huh? You would think, at that point, you, you would think, 
man, I ain't never strayed away from God, man. It's all good. I see what you did to the Red Sea. Then you get on the other side, you turn around, and the very enemy, your very oppressor, gets swallowed up by the same ocean you just crossed. Then not only that, he washes up all the weapons and everything else so you can defend yourself against future enemies. Then, while you're out in the wilderness, not only are you out there in the wilderness, but guess what? He keeps you cool during the day with the cloud. Keeps you warm at night by a pillar of fire. Then you got hungry and what is he sending? Manna. Things got too good. And they begin to stray. But when God brings trouble on our lives, it just helps us remember yes. where we came from. God is calling you, son. You got an anointing on your life. You have a call of God in your life. And God is going to sit down and make sure that thing happens. So you just praise God all the way through it. Because guess what? I, re I believe the report of the Lord. I believe that the curse stopped with me. Because I'm healed in Jesus' name by his strike. I am healed. You got to claim the word of God over your life. Listen, don't think I'm just talking to my son. Because there's probably people in here right now that are dealing with disease. They're dealing with hell. But if you just sit down and pray the word of God over your life and believe it, don't you sit back and wait to see it happen. You better give God some praise right now like it happened yesterday. God, I believe the report of the Lord. I believe that by your stripes I am healed. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what my pop says. I don't care what everybody else says. I believe your report. Instead of getting upset and questioning God, saying, where is God in all this? Stop your blood clot crying. Shut up that complaining. Straighten out your spaghetti spine. And because you need to look and say, I'm going through all this because I'm anointed. I am called of God. I'm going to stand right here. Devil, you can throw anything you want at me at any time. I'm going to stand on the word. Specific 
jobs, but we're all full of a treasure. We have to bring out a gift that God has placed in us. In 2 Timothy, matter of fact, I think I have a just real quick. 2 Timothy 1 and 6, it says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. The gift of God that has been put in you, this treasure, there's a reason why he said stir it up. Listen, saints, anytime you begin to stir something that's been sitting around for a while, it begins to break up the sediment. There's a sediment that's been in a lot of our lives from not serving. It's through your serving that you start to stir up the gift. And as you begin to stir it up, the sediment begins to rest. That sediment of unforgiveness. Yeah. That sediment of stagnation that you just set still. That, 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 that fallow ground of your heart will begin to break up. And as he breaks that up and he stir it up again, God begins to pour in the anointing in you. And that anointing will come in you and purify that water. And that gift will fill up. This is when the rivers of living water will pour yeah. out of your bed. Yeah. Saints of God, we cannot operate or have this gift unless we receive the gift. Amen. The rest of John 10 and 10 says this. He says, but I have come to give you life yeah. and life more abundantly. Yes. Jesus Christ, the Savior of this world, desires to give you something today. Yes, hallelujah. And that's salvation. The wages of sin and death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let's stand to our feet right now. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Right here at the altar. Praise God. If you don't know Jesus Christ, 